Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to give you a few quick tips on using the white balance selector tool that is in Lightroom. As you probably know, the white balance selector tool is in the basic tab. It is right here. You could just click on it to activate it, or if you prefer, you could hit the W key on your keyboard to activate it. Now, the one tip I'm going to give you right off the bat is the tip that I think really helps me, and it's a tip that's not readily apparent. That is, when you hover over something, it would be great if you could get a preview of what that white balance is going to be when you hover over that point. Unfortunately, on the main window, you only could see it after you click. So you'd be clicking all the time. Well, if you'd like to see the preview of what the white balance will be when you're over a specific point, look over at the navigator window. The navigator window, window is in the left-hand panel, and I'm going to make the left-hand panel larger. So this is the navigator window. And for some reason, Adobe, in their infinite brilliance, has decided to give the preview there. So you can see I'm hovering over something in the main window, and it's showing the preview in the navigator window, whereas the main window stays the same. So you could just move your eyedropper around, and you'll see a preview come up over there in that navigator window. So that, I believe, helps a lot, helps you pick out at least a white balance that would work for your specific image. Now, another couple things uh, we could discuss. You could see as you look at my eyedropper, it's missing what is called the loop. That is because that is controlled down here in the toolbar. If you don't see this little strip of real estate that is directly below the image and above the film strip, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key turns that toolbar off and on. And if I click on Show Loop, what you'll see now is that Pick a Target Neutral box comes up. Now that just helps you hopefully find a neutral target. And if you look at that box carefully, you can see that it's divided up into a lot of different small grids. Those represent the pixels that you're hovered over. And the specific pixel that Lightroom is going to use when you click for the white balance is that pixel right in the middle that has the plus sign on it. Now, some people like this tight grid, meaning it's going to show a lot of surrounding pixels because it helps them narrow in on a point they want to click on. For instance, where I am here now, I'm over a very light cloud. That's where that plus sign is. But if I want to get over that darker cloud, I can move it over like that. So some people like that. It helps them fine tune exactly where they want it. A lot of people don't like this tight grid. They prefer a smaller grid. And you could do that with the scale slider down here. So if I move it to the extreme left, you could see now it's a much tighter grid you can see our plus sign is still on that middle pixel, so it really doesn't change how it samples the image. It just gives you a different view of the surrounding pixels. So if you prefer the smaller grid or the larger grid, you could control it with the scale slider, and you could go somewhere in the middle as well, so anything you like. And again, if you're like me and that just kind of annoys you, you could get rid of it totally by clicking that checkbox right there so it's gone. Now, one thing that um, I've often taught in the past and a lot of people like is if you do keep that loop open, if you look at the bottom, it shows your red, green, and blue values in percentages. Um, typically, if you could find somewhere in the image that has all three of those numbers as close to 75 as possible, that normally will give you a realistic white balance adjustment for the scene. So a lot of people like this loop open for that very reason. And you would try to find something as close as possible. For instance, right here, 77.6, 77.3, 78.7. That's probably as close to 75 as I'll get. And I could click right there. And that gives me a white balance. And you can see it barely adjusted it because the white balance was in decent shape as it was. Now, turn that loop off. Now you notice when I did click the eyedropper tool, 
it's really not an eyedropper tool, it's called the white balance selector tool, stayed open. That's because auto dismiss is not checked down here in the toolbar. So I could click as much as I want. Here, let's do something dramatic. So I could click as much as I want because I don't have that checkbox selected. If I do check this checkbox and click somewhere, then the eyedropper tool automatically closes after that click. Personally, I prefer to not have that checked because I prefer to um, keep it open and just to keep clicking around. And when I find a white balance I finally do like, I will just put the tool away by just putting it back in its little holder over here in the basic tab. So that's really all the tips I have on using the white balance selector tool. Um, the main tip I think is this navigator window in Adobe. If you're listening, just put the preview in the main window. It would make things so much easier. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.